So welcome friends how are you what if Naruto was stepping out of the shadows, world champion for a father, movie. Planet Earth, a place inhabited by mortal human and the mystical creature known as Pokemon, you can find Pokemon anywhere, on the continual land, under the, the treacherous sea, up airborne on the sky, or thriving in the jungle, anywhere on the four corner of the earth you will find Pokemon, it is quite difficult in fact to find a place without Pokemon. Planet Earth are divided into six continents or as people called them. Region, there is the land known as Kanto, where there are a legend of a three mighty birds that is said to control the planet atmosphere. Next to Kanto is a land known by Johto, this land is a birthplace of the legendary Ho-Oh. Who is said to create rainbow wherever it flies, and the mighty Lugia. Who protects the sea and swallowed those with evil heart into a whirlpool. In the south of Johto lies the land of Hoenn, Hoenn was said to be the place where the sea. The land, and the sky was created by Kyogre, Groudon. And Rayquaza respectively, up on the north of Kanto is Sinnoh. A place where time and space was created by the legendary Dialga and Palkia, it is also said to be the birthplace of the god Pokemon, Arceus, on the other side of Kanto lies Unova, a mysterious land said to house the two humanity dragon, the dragon of truth, Reshiram, and the dragon of ideal, Zekrom, on the northeast of Unova lies the land of Kalos, a place where Pokemon break past their limits and evolve into mighty creature with double the power they originally have. Our story began in the Unova region. The Unova region was said that it was created during the fight between the two brother. Both prince, the combined power of Reshiram, the dragon of truth. And Zekrom, the dragon of ideal, was too much for the land to bear so it was destroyed. The two brother finally realized their mistake and used the last of both Pokemon power to restore the land and they succeeded, but alas they wasted too much power already so after restoring the land they went dormant, never to awaken again except when either a hero of truth or the hero of ideal from the prophecy was born, before then they will continue to be sealed. Wow that an amazing story mom, cried an energetic five-year-old with blonde hair and wearing a black pajama. Good, now go to sleep Naruto, you have a big day with Professor Juniper tomorrow, said a 32-year-old red-headed beauty that looked like she was in her twenty. Okay, good night mommy, yawned the sleepy Naruto. Night Naruto, whispered Naruto's mom. Afternoon. The next afternoon we find young Naruto Namikaze running through the forest connecting Nuvema town to Akumula town with a giant stoutland chasing after him. Ha 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 ha, you can't catch me, cried the five-year-old blonde, Naruto was too busy laughing that he didn't notice a tree up ahead until he crashed into it, ow that hurt, he cried rubbing the bruise that already form on his head. Stout stout stout, cried the dog Pokemon as it rubbed its giant head against the blonde cheek affectionately, this action caused said blonde to giggle. Don't worry Stoutland, I am fine, to show that he was okay Naruto flex his arm pretending he had muscle. Good we wouldn't want you to lose any more brain cells now can we? Said a voice behind the blonde, knowing who the voice belonged to Naruto quickly jumped away and exclaimed happily, oh hi Aunt Uraya. Uraya, or Professor Juniper was a Pokemon researcher that studies the origin of Pokemon and was responsible for giving trainers their first Pokemon. She was a good friend of Minato Namikaze, Naruto's father, and Kashina Namikaze best friend. Today she was supposed to be doing a research about Pokemon living in the forest but she was actually here to see if the rumor about an injured Pokemon in the forest is real. The scientist that told her said he couldn't identify the species since according to him it moves super fast, but now she has a different problem and that was taking care of Naruto, not that she minded at all. Naruto was practically living with her since his parent was always busy, Naruto father, Minato Namikaze, was a world champion as well as the captain of the Pokemon Ranger, so that mean he was very busy and rarely stayed home. Naruto's mother was a word-renounced Pokemon coordinator so she has to travel the world attending various contests and star in many Pokey movie, he rarely seen his older sister, Natsumi, too since she was the elite four of Kalos. Even though Naruto doesn't seem to mind his family absences, Uraya can see that it was all a mask to hide how sad he was. Let's go Naruto I want to find this rare Pokemon so we could treat it, said Uraya as she turned around to where they were intended to go. Oh yeah, sorry about that let's go. That was all he said before sprinting to Arceus nowhere. Hey come back Naruto, yelled Professor Juniper as she tried to catch up to him with Stoutland behind her. After running for who know how long Naruto finally stopped when he heard a snarl, turning to the sound he ran to see what it was, what he saw really scared the young five year old. Right in the clearing was some guy about thirty year old with brown hunting outfit and a sniper on his right hand. Next to him stood a powerful looking Tyranitar smirking at another Pokemon. The Pokemon that Tyranitar was smirking at was a large teal color Pokemon. Naruto didn't know what it was called but from its dragon-like body and a jet-like wing he concluded that it was a dragon type. What was surprising about this Pokemon was the amount of bruise covering its body. 
heck the right wing of this Pokemon was covered in red splotches, bloods. Since Naruto was just a five-year-old he got scared. The man with the Tyranitar ordered, good, now just to be safe use Dragon Claw on that Latios. The Tyranitar charged at the down Pokemon with its claw raised high glowing with Dragonic power. Naruto seeing that the Latios can't move did the stupidest thing, he went in front of Latios with his hands stretch out trying to protect the Eon Pokemon. Tyranitar widened its eye and was about to stop but it can't do to the momentum, not really caring anyway it slashed Naruto with its dragonic claw, Naruto was sent flying back and crash into a nearby tree because of that, if you look at the young child now you would probably fainted. His shirt was now ruined with the claw marks on it, you can also see bloods coming off of the wound on his chest, thankfully it wasn't deep since Tyranitar wasn't using full power, but the noticeable feature were his right cheeks since it now has a large scar, from his right ear to the side of his mouth, that how long the scar was, somehow Naruto didn't faint but his eyes were close and his breath were lagged. What a foolish kid, next time get out of our way, was all the poacher said as he turned back to a now narrowed eye Latios, oh, you're mad at me now, well I am sorry for killing your shield, do you forgive me, said the poacher mockingly, seeing no response he decided to end it quick, Tyranitar, hyper beam. Latios seeing the attack about to hit him opened its mouth and fired a concentrated beam of dragonic energy, dragon pulse. The attack hit Tyranitar in the head which immediately knocked said Pokemon out. Seeing his Pokemon knocked out the poacher returned it and ran off but not before saying something, you better hope that you never see me again boy because next time I won't let you walk out alive and I will capture you one day Latios. Naruto fainted after hearing that last remark, he was into much pain to stay conscious. Seeing the poacher now gone Latios flew over to Naruto very slowly, since it was still hurt, and use heal pulse on him, it managed to close all wound but that was all his energy. So Latios fainted after having no more energy left, it landed on top of Naruto who was knocked out also. That was the scene Professor Juniper and Stoutland came across, a Latios sleeping on Naruto. Naruto woke up to see a white tiles above him, what, why am I in the infirmary? Seeing that he still had not yet recovered his memory he sit up. That was the worst mistake he had ever made in his life. The pain, the searing pain that he felt when he sit up. It was too much for his tiny body so he just collapsed back onto the bed. Experiencing pain seems to bought back his memory and now he can remember clearly, oh yeah I try to block the attack from a Pokemon to save the injured Latios, hearing the thought he let out a humorless chuckle, that has got to be the dumbest thing I have ever done, but I do hope that Latios is okay, finishing his thought Naruto ran his hand through his golden blonde hair and traced the scar on his cheek, it wasn't deep but it was still noticeable. Still tracing his scar his mind wandered to the poacher he encountered the other day. It was most likely the scariest experience in Hyde young life. Being defenseless and wasn't able to protect his friend since his aunt is a professor who study Pokemon he considered all Pokemon his friend Naruto wasn't stupid he knew that if the poacher wanted he could have killed Naruto, the only reason he left was because of the huge explosion caused by Latios dragon pulse, his left hand still tracing the scar while his right hand clenched into a fist, so tight that his fist was turning white from the loss of blood supplies. He hated this feeling. The feeling of not being able to protect his loved one and this scar was a reminder of how he was useless and wasn't able to protect his friend, all he did was bought Latios a few seconds. Before he could continue his thought the door bust open and all he saw was a red blur entering right before his vision was covered by some red substances, hair, on closer inspection he could tell that it was his mother, why you ask, well. Observation 1, his mother was the only person he knew that has red hair as vibrant as this. Observation 2, he could smell the same perfume his mother wears all the time, red rose. Observation 3, she kept repeating are you okay sweetie? And mommy is here it'll be okay? Quickly breaking the embraced Naruto took a deep breath of air before exclaiming, I am fine mom, it wasn't a big deal, he immediately regretted his choice of words when he noticed that his mother hairs started to cover her eyes and a demonic looking aura surround her. Not a big deal, she whispered but everyone can hear her. Noticing the tone his mother used Naruto started to sweat and prepared for the inevitable. Not a big deal you say, is that what it is, because the last time I checked you were beaten up by a Tyranitar and the poacher because you decided to ditch Uraya and do some exploring. Is that what you call not a big deal, is it, she all but screamed out causing everyone in the rooms to cover their ears and stared at Kashina in fear and awe, fear because she was covered in a demonic aura and her hair seemed to be flying everywhere like she was in the center of a hurricane, in awe because she said all that in a single breath. Naruto was just plain out scared, he was always afraid when his mother gets angry, now she wasn't angry, oh heaven no, she was furious. Before Naruto can get another scolding to, a hand touched Kashina's shoulder trying to calm her down. Kashina, Naruto turned and finally noticed the other occupants in the room. 
There standing with his hand on his mom's shoulder was his father, Minsto Namikaze, the world champion, with a warm smile on his face. Standing behind him was a young woman who looked like a carbon copy of his mother but has streaks of blonde on her hair. This person is none other than his sister, Natsumi Namikaze, the strongest member of the Elite Four of Kalos, the region that is said to contain the strongest gym leaders in Elite Four. Calm down Kashina Naruto is fine and that all that matter isn't it, thank god his father was here, he could always calm the raging typhoon that was his mother when angry. Fine, whatever, she huffed before suffocating Naruto into her embrace, is my little maelstrom hurt? Are you okay? Do you want me to kiss your boo-boo? Seeing no response she looked down and saw a whitehead Naruto, quickly releasing him, she placed Naruto on the bed, breathing a few time to get air to circulate to his brain Naruto sent a small glare toward his mother who was just smiling sweetly at him, a little too sweat. I am fine mom, just tired that all, said Naruto still trying to catch his breaths. That good, wouldn't want my brother to die before you become a champion now can we, said a familiar voiced. Looking where the voiced originate he froze before smiling, big sis Natsumi, he exclaimed happily, his sister just went and hugged him before ruffling his hair, something that infuriated him. I see that the hit to the tree didn't damage any brain cell now, good cause you need all of them if you want to have a chance to beat me, Natsumi said in a somewhat mischievous voice. Hearing that comment caused Naruto to scowl before exclaiming angrily, just watch sis one day I am going to destroy you and your Pokemon in a Pokemon battle, before becoming a Pokemon master, Natsumi smiled and was about to say something else that would probably make Naruto angrier but a voice interrupted her. That a great goal Naruto, with that kind of commitment I am sure that you'll go far said the warm voice of his father. Looking up he saw his father, Minato Namikaze smiling down on him, which caused Naruto to smile to but then a thought came back to him, hey dad what happened to that Latios, he asked worryingly. Hearing the question Minato just smiled before answering, the Latios is fine, according to Reya he just received some bruise that would heal soon. Oh that good, now can I go visit him, asked Naruto hopefully. That won't be necessary, said a voice. Naruto turned toward the direction of the door and all he saw was a teal blue before something crashed into him, that something began to hug him and Naruto could have sworn he felt feathers, opening his eye he saw a fresh looking Latios hugging and licking his face, this of course caused him to erupt it into a fit of giggle. Nice to see you're all right Latios, said Naruto happily as he stroked the feathers on Latios long neck with one hand and the other hugging the Eon Pokemon. Latios, cooed Latios as he buried his head onto Naruto's chest, an action that caused Naruto to giggle again. The sight caused everyone in the room to soul and a certain red hair teen to pout, everyone else was happy to see such bond between people and Pokemon and Natsumi was just sad she couldn't add such cute Pokemon to her team. Not wanting to break this scene but you'll should head back the boy still need his rest after all, said the same voice, Naruto looked back and saw that it was Araya Juniper, his aunt. Aunt Araya, exclaimed the aspiring Pokemon trainer. It's good to see you're all right Naruto, she said with a sincere smile, Araya then turned toward the rest of the people in the room. Now all of you get out the boy need his rest, with that said Professor Juniper walked out of the room but not before sending a smile toward Naruto. Sighing his mother stood from the bed and hugged him, see you tomorrow then my little Naru. His sister, Natsumi ruffled his hairs causing him to scowl at her, she just smiled, well see you later kid. Minato smiled before ruffling his hair, again, get better okay. Not worry I will dad, he exclaimed causing Latios to cooed in response. His dad just chuckled e before walking out of the room. He was now alone, with Latios, Naruto picked Latios up and stared into said Pokemon eye, an action which caused Latios to be confused. Latios? questioned the Eon Pokemon, Naruto just stared at the Pokemon before replying, Latios do you want to be partner? Lati? asked the legendary Pokemon, being partner, it mean I help you get stronger and you'll help me get stronger, we'll be a team, with you and me together we can become the strongest team the world has ever seen said Naruto with such conviction that he made Latios stared at him in awe, we can travel the world, make new friend to help reach our dream of being the strongest, we won't have to worry about being hurt again, that is what we can achieve if we work together Latios. Latios seeing the conviction in his savior eyes gained confident that they can become the best, Latios, agreed the Eon Pokemon. That was the day that will be forever marked in history as the day the strongest team ever created in the Pokemon world was formed. What the Naruto didn't realize was that on the other side of the Minato was listening to the whole thing and to say he was proud was an understatement. He pushed himself off the wall before walking off toward his destination, you will go far Naruto, you and Latios, Minato sky blue eyes suddenly pulse with power, protect that, which cannot protect themselves, that is the legacy of every heir to our family and I think it's time I tell you this, his eyes wasn't blue, it now turned golden yellow, the same shade as his hair, 
it's time to reveal to you the legacy of our ancestor, the legacy of an Aura Knights. What a beautiful scenery, muttered a young man of 16 years of age, staring, his azure blue eyes fixated on the waterfall at his right, such beauty needs to be preserved, with elegance of royalty, his tan hand grabbed the handle of the porcelain teacup, picking it up before taking a sip, inhaling its intoxicating scent, at all cost, he finished by putting the cup back onto the plate, his navy orbs turned their attention to a young man with forest green hair. Keep talking like that, and people will think you are a philosopher instead of a trainer, came the green-haired man remark as he snickered slightly before taking a sip of tea, the azure eyes man watched his every movement. I do not care what people think of me, he had long forsaken the ability to care what random stranger in the world think of him, or rather, what they expected of him, as long as I know who I am, the world could think myself as a lunatic for all I care, his azure eyes drifted toward the clashing waterfall, taking a sip of tea while admiring the beauty that is mother nature. What an interesting, philosophy, commented the green hair man as he put the cup down, moving on, I've heard that you booked a flight to Jubilife City, taking another sip from his tea, the man held eyes contact with the azure eyes individual, now, can you tell me what business you have in Sinnoh, Naruto? The now identified Naruto was silent for a while, stirring his cup while his eyes drifted, the expression the other man knew too well, it was the expression Naruto always have when he was about to reveal something he meant to keep under locks. How did you know that, Salon? He finally asked, his azure blue eyes stared at his friend in confusion, he was pretty sure he did not tell Salon or anyone related to the man, said man merely gave him an amused yet sheepish smirk. Your aunt told me, he admitted with a light shrug, now stop avoiding the question. Why are you going to Hoenn? You've never stepped foot out of Unova, even when invited to all those social gathering outside of the region. I decided to enter a league, his tone was light and in quick pace, but it hatched a desired effect. Excuse me, did I hear that right? Salon's tone was one of awestruck and slight confusion, Naruto Namikaze, the self-proclaimed philosopher and nature's lover, finally decided to enter the grueling world of Pokemon battling. Don't sound so surprising, commented Naruto, his face void of emotion but his eyes shone with slight amusement, it's not like I haven't participate in any official tournament. Very true, agreed the green-haired man as he shake his head in amusement before taking a light sip of his tea, but this is the first time you enter something so major like the regional league, he placed his cup down then looked back at Naruto, why did you decide on entering the Sinnoh league anyway when you could have entered the Unova league instead? First off, don't act like I am new to the whole idea of Pokemon battling, stated Naruto as he brushed a strand of golden blonde lock away from his eyes, and secondly, there is a reason why Alder is considered the strongest regional champion, Unboa, without a doubt has the toughest gym leaders and elite fours out of the six regions. Very true, admitted the green-haired man, but that doesn't explain why you would go to Sinnoh, you could have as easily gone to Kanto, and maybe Johto instead, why not Hoenn? He asked, not missing the slight flinch when his friend heard the region where land and sea was born. I could, but I don't want to, he answered sharply with a shrug, his apathetic blue eyes turned cold causing Salon to sigh softly. It was his fault for not watching his words carefully. Look man, I am sorry, I didn't mean to, don't worry about it, Naruto cut him off before standing up, lifting his arm to see the rectangular device attached to his arm. Look at the time, I have to get back or I can't say goodbye to my aunt before leaving, as he finished putting the satchel around his neck, Naruto turned back to the crestfallen Salon, you've been a great friend, Salon, and I am going to miss you, he admitted as he extended his arm. Good luck, and I am going to miss you, buddy replied the green-haired man with a slightly forced smile as he stood up and grabbed Naruto's extended forearm before shaking it. And I you, with a smile, Naruto turned around and exited the shop, Salon just stood there, watching the retreating form of his best friend with a sad smile. I hope you would move past her, Naruto, Professor Juniper's laboratory, Nuvema Town, the Unova region. Cold, that was the only emotion could feel right now, this was why he disliked technology so much, it was a means for an easier life but Naruto felt that machines was the thing standing between mankind and nature, sure machines were just byproduct of mankind's innovation, but human are becoming more and more residents to these remnants of their ancestors. That was why he always dreamed of being a Pokemon trainer, the career would give him the perfect excuse to leave the city and explore the wonder nature's has to offer, even though he practically grew up in this lab, the feeling of emptiness will always unnerve him, which was why he was always admitted on playing outside whenever his parent wasn't home and he had to stay with his aunt, an occasion that was almost daily but today he would just have to suck it up, today is the day he will finally leave out and start his journey, but he couldn't do that before saying goodbye to the person who raised him. Oh hello, Naruto, came the chipper voice of a young woman in her late twenty wearing a white lab coat, what are you doing here? Aunt Oria, he greeted with a nod of his head but his aunt pulled him into a hug, 
something that he did not resist to. I am here to pick up my Pokemon, he quickly said after he broke the warm embrace. A look of realization appear on her face as she quickly recalled the conversation they had the night prior. Oh, that's right, you're leaving for Sinnoh today, she quickly turned around and walked deeper inside her lab, Naruto following her a close distance away. Ah, here we are, they stopped and came upon a metal door, typing the access codes into the panel left of the door, said door split apart in the middle before disappearing into the slits on either side, come in, Naruto, your Pokemons are inside. Warning inside, Naruto saw an abundance of shelves decorated the room, each containing more than a dozen's Pokeball with a name written on top, signifying the trainers of said Pokeball. The blonde-haired teen always hated this room, it was like a prison, keeping these mystical being inside the confine of a Pokeball in suspended animation until called upon by their trainers, it was truly sickening. He knew it was kind of hypercritical of him to think that since he himself keeps his Pokemon like that, but Naruto feasted on the knowledge that he was the only person feeling this way. After a short amount of time, they reached a cabinet that was labeled Naruto Namikaze. There you go, Naruto, if you needed anything else, you know where to find me, his aunt is a very busy woman, he knew that, and he cherished the facts that she always made time for him, turning his attention back to the shelf, he couldn't help but note that it was very barren, there are three ball on said shelf, two luxury ball and a premier ball. Grabbing the two luxury ball, Naruto smiled as he clipped them on his belt. Picking up the premier ball, he whispered, hello there, buddy. The pale white ball seems to glow slightly, I am sorry we haven't talked in a long time, but I went through some tough time, it shook slightly, releasing a comfortable cerulean glow, but it is over now, and we can finally achieve that goal I promised you, the whole ball vibrated, releasing waves of sea green aura, and Naruto could have sworn he heard a roar echoing in his mind. Smiling one last time, Naruto attached the ball to his belt, turned around and left the room. It's just us. You and me, against the world, Jubilife City, Sinnoh region. What a long ride, muttered a young man as he walked out of the airport, his leather jacket pulled close to his chest for warmth as his body acquainted itself with the chilly climate of the Sinnoh region, stopping suddenly, Naruto turned his attention to the high afternoon sky, the ever-constant breeze bristled his blonde locks. I need to visit a Pokemon center now to register before it's too late, muttered Naruto as he quickened his pace, his hand tucked into his jacket as the air suddenly got colder, the weather of Sinnoh clearly cannot be predict, very soon, he could feel droplets of rain fell on him making him shiver even more as he glared at the stormy sky. What, in the name of all things holy, is going on? The sky was perfectly sunny not a moment ago. He complained, even though Unova was far from the driest region, it was still very rare for rain to occur, and for some reason it always irked him when this happened. Pulling his leather jacket tight, Naruto ran in some random direction since he does not know the layout of the city well enough, stopping, he realized that he was on the less friendly side of Jubilife City if all the broken windows and dirty road were any indication. Dear Lord, where's the Pokemon Center? whispered the blonde haired man as he looked around, his azure eyes narrowed as his fist clenched. A faint blue aura encompassed his body as a wave of despair and paint hit him, what was that? he whispered, his eyes darting back and forth, stretching his aura so he could sense any living organism in his proximity, there it is. He finally sensed the distressed Pokemon's aura, and it was fading fast. Sprinting as fast as he could, Naruto made several turns through the dark alleyways, destroying several boxes in his ways. The citizens of the dark alleys glared at him, but no one was stupid enough to do anything about it due to the powerful blue aura surrounding Naruto, said trainer paid these low life no mind, his thought was consumed by Pokemon whose aura was slowly fading, hoping that he would arrive there in time. Finally arriving at the source, Naruto saw a small scorpion-like Pokemon with purple scales and two stingers on its tail. Its scale was all burnt with several open wounds where crimson, red bloods are pouring out. What the, he whispered, shocked that someone was willing to hurt such a young Pokemon, he suddenly saw something in his line of vision and jumped out of the way, which was a good thing as a ball of pure ominous energy sailed past him and impacted against the crusty wall. Turning around, he saw four dog-like Pokemon with pure black fur and a bone-like mask on top of its head, Houndour. What are you guys doing, attacking a defenseless Pokemon like that? he demanded but all he got were angry growls, reaching out with his aura, Naruto tried to get a sense on the dark pokemons, as soon as his aura touched theirs, Naruto physically flinched as all he could feel are anger and resentment as well as pain, who did this to you, he whispered as he tried to move closer, but the four hound hours just growled at him, damn, I have no choice, reaching for the lushuary ball on his belt, Naruto grabbed it and threw it into the air, god's speed, Serperior. out of the luxury ball appear a green serpentine pokemon with pure red eyes, Sir Perrier. It cried as it coiled on itself in front of Naruto, glaring at the four frightened hound hours. 
Serperior, Giga Drain, Naruto ordered, without even acknowledging him, the grass snake Pokemon complied with her master's order. Sir, she cried as forest green aura surrounded her body, a second later, four thick roots appear out of the concrete and wrap themselves around the four dark Pokemons, said Pokemon tried to struggle out of it but they were no match for the final evolved form of a Snivy. HHHHRRR, the four hound hours cried as their energy are being drained out of them at an alarming rate. Seeing the opportunity, Naruto rossed toward the injured Skarupi, it tried to resist, but Naruto's superior strength managed to allow him to carry the poison-type Pokemon into his arm, channeling aura into his arm p, Naruto tried to ease its pain like he saw his father do several time, a giant smile broke through his face as the expression on Skarupi relaxed and the open wounds started to close. He turned his attention back to the other and saw that the four hound hours were somehow able to escape his superior's giga drain and was now surrounding said Pokemon but it seems that the only reason they were not unconscious yet was due to the fact that the grass type was playing with them, whenever one would get close to her, Superior would use the roots from Giga Drain to slap them away, it was kind of amusing if the situation wasn't so serious. Superior, stop playing with them, and finished them off with gastro acid, he commanded, even though Skarupi's wounds are no longer fatal, it could still be damaging to the poor Pokemon. Even though she wanted to play with these hound hours some more, Superior complied with her master's command, with lightning speed, she used the roots from Giga Drain and wrapped them tightly around the four dark Pokemon, as they continued to struggle, Serperior's body glowed with purple aura, her red eyes flashing as she channeled her poison into the roots, very soon the poison she sent into the roots reached the four trapped Pokemon and heavily poisoned them. HRRRR, they cried as their power diminished and energy disappear, finally, their body went limb as they all fell into a blissful unconsciousness. Good job, Serperior, now return, with that said, he hurriedly returned his Pokemon back into the luxury ball. SS's Serperior, cried the grass snake Pokemon as it returned to its comfy resting place. Come on, boy, let's get you to a Pokemon center, whispered Naruto as he dashed out of the alley and into the main city street, blissfully unaware of someone watching his every move. He, so the boy all grown up, a man covered in shadow spoke as he leaned on the dusty wall, it would be the more satisfying to take what's rightfully mine now that he can defend himself, isn't that right, Tyranitar? The Pokeball he is currently holding glowed brightly as it vibrated, the hushed sounds of a roar can be heard in the dark alleys as the man laughed alongside his Pokemon. Pokemon Center, Jubilife City, Sinnoh Region. Your help was greatly appreciated, Nurse Joy, said Naruto as he stood in front of the main desk where the pink-haired lady wearing a nurse uniform stood with one hand on her cheek as she blushed. D don't thank me, I am just glad to be of assistance, Mr. Namikaze replied the local nurse Joy as she toned down her flushed face which was not an easy thing to do with the man who has the look of Adonis, Naruto's smile turned a little sour, he knew that he had good look, but he also knew that the reason women everywhere flushed at the sight of him wasn't because of what he looked like, it was because of who he looked like, his father. For someone whose strive was to get out of his family's shadow, having women constantly flocking to him because he was basically his father's clone didn't help, with a snort he turned around, grabbing the luxury ball on the counter, missing the disappointed look from the nurse as he walked toward the Pokemon Center's cafeteria. Grabbing a quick meal, Naruto went toward the sitting area and sat on the seat next to the window, putting his tray down, the blonde-haired man grabbed his phone as well as one of his luxury ball, opening the app installed by his aunt, Naruto scanned the Pokeball. Skarupi, the scorpion Pokemon, it grips prey with its tail claws and injects poison, it tenaciously hangs on until the poison takes, came the robotic feminine voice of his phone causing Naruto to smile. It was not news that the youngest Namikaze disliked machineries, so instead of gifting him a Pokédex for his birthday, his aunt, Professor Juniper, instead installed the Pokédex programming into his phone. Scrolling down, Naruto pressed the screen, this Pokémon is male and has the ability Sniper, this Pokémon currently knows the move Bite, Leer, Poison Sting, Pin Missile and Toxic, stated the robotic female voice. Pretty good move set for one so young, he muttered as he caressed the luxury ball. Sending pulse of soothing aura into it, he could hear the faint sounds of Skarupi purring which caused him to smile, he always enjoys raising young Pokemon and turning them into vicious fighting machine, we just need to work on some defensive move, he felt the luxury ball shadow slightly, almost as if it was nervous, don't worry, Skarupi, when I am done with you, no other Pokemon will defeat you ever again, the ball shakes again, but this one was one of happiness and determination. As Naruto was smiling at his Pokeball, he did not see a group of kid coming to his table. Hey you, exclaimed a loud voice to his left, catching Naruto by surprise, said trainer look up and stared at the raven haired 14 years old wearing a red cap with something akin to amusement, the 14 years old didn't seem to register this as he continued to talk, I challenge you to a Pokemon battle, 
he finished by pointing his index finger at Naruto. After a moment of silence later with the boy not changing his pose, Naruto finally answered. Excuse me? His voice was apathetic, but his eyes shined brightly with amusement and slight irritation, the raven-haired man opened his mouth, about to say something when they were interrupted. Wait Ash, you can't just go around challenging random people, called out a man in his late teen with spiky brown hair. But Brock, I have too, Don said that I can't battle, and he'll prove how great I am by defeating this guy. The boy practically yelled that proclamation, garnering the attentions of everyone in the cafeteria. Pika Pika, came the voice from the boy's shoulder, startling Naruto slightly, his eyes narrowed in thought, he didn't even see the Pikachu even though they were near feet apart, using his aura. Naruto tried to enter the electric Pokemon's subconscious but was once again surprised when he was ruthlessly thrown out, Pika. Cried the Pikachu as it glared at Naruto who was biting his lip to prevent a scream from coming out, this Pikachu was no ordinary Pikachu. It clearly wasn't new to the concept of aura, and seems to pick up on a trick to prevent aura base move from affecting it. How peculiar, I accept, Naruto's answer caught the other by surprise as the boy and Brock stop their argument and look at him in surprise. WH what? asked Pikachu's trainer. Naruto just smirked before standing up, revealing that he was a good six inches taller than the boy. I said, I accept your challenge, Pokemon Center's training area, Jubilife City, Sinnoh A region. Naruto was currently standing on his assigned area as the now revealed Ash Ketchum stood opposing him, in the referee corner stood one Brock Slate with a pretty blue haired girl wearing a very short skirt. This is a one on one Pokemon battle, neither trainer are allowed to substitute their Pokemon and the winner will be decided on whose Pokemon is the last one standing, are both trainer ready? He asked, receiving a nod from the two trainer, begin, as soon as that word was uttered, both trainer threw their respective Pokeball, Ash with his regular model while Naruto used a more expansive kind. The luxury ball. Starly, I choose you, exclaimed Ash, God's speed, superior, exclaimed Naruto. Out of Ash's Pokeball came a small avian with grayish feathers and white mask like marking on its face while Naruto's luxury ball unleashed the serpentine superior. Star star star. Chirped the gray Pokemon as it flapped its wing to gain leverage. Superior rrrrr, screeched the final evolved form of Snivy, its crimson red eyes staring at the bird like Pokemon with cleared hunger. Wow, what is that? muttered Ash as he bought out his Pokédex to scan it. Pokémon unknown, came the robotic male voice of the Pokédex, causing Naruto to smirk again, he wonders what poor region did this kid came from since most trainer from Sinnoh have a national Pokédex due to the variety of trainer attending the Pokémon League here. What, how come my Pokédex doesn't know what kind of Pokémon that is? Even though he look enraged, Naruto couldn't help but chuckle on how childish he sounded. Wait Ash, let me check came the feminine voice of that short skirt girl, pointing her Pokédex at Serperior it scanned her. Serperior, the regal Pokémon and the final evolved form of Snivy, Serperior only gives its all against strong opponents who are not phased by the glare from its noble eyes, came the robotic male voice of Don's Pokédex causing Naruto to frown slightly, it is never a good thing for your opponent to know more about up your Pokémon. Thank you, Don, yelled Ash before muttering to himself, I don't get it, why doesn't my Pokédex know about it? It is because my Pokemon is not native to this region, Ash, answered Naruto with a sneer, he could have been training his new Skarupi by now, but instead he had to face some rookie. What do you mean by that? inquired the aspiring Pokemon master. Forget it, now are you going to fight or are you going to just stand there like a mentally disturbed toddler, something about Ash just rubbed him the wrong way, he just didn't know what. It'll make you eat those words, he exclaimed before pointing his index finger at the board superior, Starly, use tackle. Star Star, exclaimed said Pokemon as it tucked in its wing and fly toward the regal Pokemon in a relatively fast pace, but to the trained eyes of Serperior, it looked like the flying type was flying in slow motion. As soon as Starly was two feet from Serperior, Naruto ordered, slam, with that simple command, Serperior swung its tail at the incoming Pokemon with lighting speed, sending said Pokemon sailing toward its trainer. Starly, cried Ash as his Pokemon landed in front of him, its face buried to the ground, but it wasn't unconscious. With great shows of endurance and commitment, the damaged avian managed to pick itself up, and flew into the air. Starly, it screeched as it glared at the smirking superior. Alright, Starly, cheered Ash alongside Pikachu, Naruto just snorted. I have no time for game, he muttered before ordering, Serperior, Solar Beam, said Pokemon nodded in acknowledgement before her body started to glow from absorbing the radiant energy of the sun as she opened her mouth, causing a ball of bright yellow energy to form, Ash's eyes widened at the sight. Starly, get in close with quick attack, prevent Superior from finishing that at all cost. Star Star, 
cried Starly as it followed its master order and dived toward Superior, its body glowed slightly as white streak formed behind it, a smirk appear on Naruto's face. Checkmate, he muttered as Starly got in close, rap now. He ordered, without a second of thought, Superior used its long tail and wrapped it around the avian. Star. Starly no, coil, he commanded once again and once again Superior followed her master's orders without doubt, wrapping herself around the struggling Starly, cutting the circulation to its brain, but Naruto did not care, with an indifferent look, the youngest Namikaze ordered, finish it. A predatory glint shined in Superior's eyes as she aimed her mouth at the suffocating Starly, solar beam fully charged and ready for fire. Superior rrrrr, cried the regal Pokemon as she unleashed a torrent of solar energy at Starly, a beam of extremely dense energy spiral out of her mouth and impacted against the flying type, sir, with her work finish, Serperer used its tail to throw the bird away. No, Starly, cried Ash as he stepped out of the ring and ran toward his falling Pokemon, are you okay, Starly, Ash asked as he stared down at the unconscious Pokemon in his arm, even though he wasn't trained in the medical field, Ash knew that his Starly was in serious trouble if the smoking feather on its body was any indication, glaring at Naruto one last time, he ran back inside the building to heal his beloved Pokemon. Ash wait, cried his other friend as they catch up to the enraged 14 years old, Naruto just stood there, allowing his superior to coil around him and rested its head on his shoulder, she was very affectionate, looking back at the Pokemon center, he wondered if he was being too cruel to that poor, undertrained Starly, but he quickly shook the thought off, Ash challenged him in the first place, he doesn't need to feel sorrow for the pain he inflicted onto them. Well, muttered Naruto as he rubbed his superior's chin, causing it to hiss lightly, we should hurry, there's a Pokemon contest tomorrow and I can finally show the world who I am the end, thanks for watching, also remember to subscribe and like this video, see you in the next video.